We'll just introduce you real quick so you can get started. Okay. Talia Bourdine is the artist that is going to transform this chat with Caroline D'Amore. Did I say that correctly? No, no, I'm just kidding. It's D'Amore. I know D'Amore. everybody does that because of the apostrophe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And we're all, we all have Italian blood. So, mm-hmm. Delia, D'Amore, Celio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Chelio is a perception artist and he's going to get going while we uh, go live to Instagram. Cool. Thank you. And we'll talk to you at the end and get your message for us. Okay. Thank you, Chelio. Well, for a minute, while I set up my phone, tell us where you are. <laughs> Whatever I'm, you can say, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I'm at home. Um, I'm just working and chatting with you and dealing with meetings with pizza girl all the time that's like what i do back to back all day long um yeah i mean i'm just in full-on ceo mode right now okay i think i can do it this way how's that i can actually hear you and if anyone can't hear us on zoom or facebook you're just gonna have to send me a message i've gotten no messages so everything must be fine (laughs) Yeah. Okay, we figured it out. Um, I think it's a bad echo. echo. Is it still, still a bad echo? echo? There's an echo on your. I mean, there's like a, a tunnel-y mm-hmm. kind of sound to me. I wonder if it's this. Should I take these out? For me, it's it actually sounds fine, but I guess maybe for other people. For other people. Okay. Let's see. Is that better? Everyone's saying better. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Cool. Welcome to humanizing the icon. <laughs> what was that? I have no idea. Yeah. Wait, Wait, is your computer yeah. muted? There we go. It is now. Ah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yay. Technical. technical. Terribly technically. technically. I know. But that's okay. We're figuring it out as we go. Yes. I love how we both have wild hair. It's so wild, honestly. It's always this wild. And my manager's always like, Caroline, brush your hair. And I'm just like, when do I have time to like sit there and like do this? Unless somebody does it for me, this is what I look like. So get used to it. How often do you brush yours? I'm like once a week. I never, I brush it like when I shower um, and when I wash my hair, which I don't always wash my hair because then the pink goes out, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I brush it, maybe I don't always brush it when I shower, but I brush it when I wash it. So it's about, I don't want to tell anybody, but it's, it's, it's I love it. rare. It's, it's, it's rock star. So it's beautiful. Um, so yeah, a little backstory since we just kind of met through friends, we haven't like fully caught up. Um, humanizing the icon is actually, well, it started as an art exhibit at the Venice Biennale in Italy at the end of 2019. Um, that Celio Bordin, who's actually creating the live art on the Facebook Live, which the Instagram people can't see, but they can see in the final episode. Um, he was a part of that and I curated it. We were invited based on artwork that's actually in my film based on the life of Mary Pickford which is very much like this avant-garde, not conventional biopic uh, telling of the story. And so she was like this portal as the mother of Hollywood, but then it went into icon as spirituality and mythology all the way through to pop culture, even human as icon. Like what is icon really, you know, Um, it became the exploration. And so the exhibit was so cool. I don't know if you've been to the Biennale. Have you gotten to go yet? There's art everywhere in Venice for six months straight every two years. Is it like an it's like an art walk or something? Yeah. Kind of. It just takes over the whole island of Venice. It's in every indoor space, even in outdoor spaces, and it's just everything. Everything from the most renowned to emerging to everything like everything I I would love to I'm gonna have to put that on my on my wish list you'll come next time let's do another one and then the guests that have been in the show because now we have these drawings um we can do an exhibit with the with the art it'd be cool the art it's just so cool I've never had anybody do art well I've been interviewed so this is really really cool 
It is cool. And Chelio is really intuitive and perceptive and it's amazing what he comes out with. So um, we'll be excited at the end to see. And so, yeah, during COVID, we just wanted to talk to visionaries and different people, artists, scientists, authors, spiritual leaders, just to kind of see where people are at and like break open, you know, paradigms and deconstruct kind of whatever comes up in the conversation. And I function very intuitively when it comes to inviting guests on. So I didn't even spend a lot of time like looking into your history. I'm just like, there was something energetically <laughs> that, something energetically I felt like you as just a powerhouse. And as I said, very diverse and the friends we have in common and stuff like that. So I'm excited to get to know you with everybody else. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. So tell us like how, okay, we'll just start with the last year or so. Like, how has it been for you? Like, yeah. So the year, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a heavy one because it's been so hard for everyone that you almost feel like guilty for feeling like it's been a really hard time because it's been hard for everyone, you know, mm -hmm. but for me, it was straight out of my divorce into COVID. Wow. So, and I know that like a lot of people of divorce, a lot of, a lot of women, I know more of the female stories in divorce um, than male, but a lot of women feel very like just displaced and confused and scared right out of the divorce. And you do a lot of like reactive, irrational things, you know, because you're scared and your life is all of a sudden like that just completely altered, you know, like every day having, you know, the smell of coffee in the kitchen and the little like, you know, footsteps of my daughter, like running around and, you know, my ex playing with her while I could still get a couple hours of sleep. That was, you know, all those sweet things. And then out of nowhere, you're just alone. Yeah. And for me, I have to admit, I'm really, I'm, I really struggle with being alone. Mm -hmm. And I, and because and of that, because I've, that been I've been in a relationship after relationship after relationship, after relationship after since I was 17. I, was 17. I think it stems think it from stems the death from of my mother. Death. I was five and all of a sudden she got really sick, um, actually with AIDS. AIDS. Mm. And, and, you know, you know I, watched I watched her, her die, die and that was that my being five. five. You, you know, know what I mean? mean? Like, I'm a special when, when she was laying in the, in the casket, casket, you know, so I saw her lay, like lifeless body and I had this memory of it just always. And that was like my main memory, you know? So I think for me, I'm going through this in therapy, my, I have like major attachment issues and I cling on and I hold on for like dear life. And I think it can be a little suffocating <laughs> and crazy, but I, it really comes from like just this place of like really wanting love and family. And um, I just, I didn't really have that. You know, my dad tried his best, but he was a single dad of five crazy girls. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So it was crazy. And I had to go to catering gigs with him you know, when I was five years old, six years old, seven years old, old, wearing these shirts that humiliated me and said pizza girl or pizza kid at the time. Wow. And he didn't leave us at home. And he had to go cater like all these big TV shows like 90210. And he was like the big, like second meal pizza man in town. So that's kind of how I got my name, the girl. Mm -hmm. um, just, just being, uh, you know, having no choice but to go and cater and, you know, be up late and have school the next day and um, just kind of like really all of us fighting for my dad's attention. You know, he could only spread it so far and have to pay the bills. And work and so I've definitely like developed a, like a, a neediness of like love, you know, and always looking for it in relationships. And I never really like learned how to give myself that on my own mm -hmm. and that's so freaking important like I always needed like validation and like love and to be told I'm amazing from this other person because I didn't 
take the time ever to do it on my own and do the divorce and then COVID. So I'm stuck on my own. You know, I don't have the ability to go, you know, out every night and fancy events and this and that. So it was this crazy, like, oh my God, like I'm alone with my, my thoughts and thoughts can be really terrifying if you don't get a handle on where they really come from. And um, I read this book that really helped me and it's called The Untethered Soul. I'm rereading it right now. You are? Right now. Oh my God. My second read of it. Yes. It's life changing. And I felt like it was really, it really pissed me off the first couple chapters. I like made me kind of frustrated and angry because now I'm listening to all my thoughts and I'm like, so like, it was just driving me nuts. You know what I mean? But once you get past that and you learn that you're just like this watcher inside who's just like, your thoughts are just thoughts. They just come and go. You see something, it triggers something. It doesn't, it's not you. You know what I mean? So for me to figure that out was so helpful, like, because, you know, it can be scary up there. You got to get a handle on that. Yes. And also also just the sense sense of like, it's not about entitlement to have emotions and thoughts. This, these sort of like energies moving through you. It's like some people do feel guilty like you said, even that like, it's been so hard for everyone. There's almost this sense of feeling bad to say how hard it's been. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, and then also like, it looks like everything's so perfect for me because, you know, I got the Hills and then I'm on TV and people think like, that means your life is together. And it's oh, wait, okay. so how did, and, and this is part of humanizing the icon, right? It's like, we're all kind of icons because we're these like personas and these, these beings with many, many faces. And so you go from like, you know, your, your marriage and this, this sense of, uh, comfort, let's just say Mm -hmm. to feeling like the rug kind of got pulled out from under you. Completely. And it was my choice to leave. So I think a lot of people are like, well, what are you complaining about? Like you left you know, so it doesn't make it me, easier. Yeah. For me, it was like, I almost like had this crazy guilt and also like, also, I actually like, just I recently, recently talked to my ex-husband, ex-husband about it. We've become, become very, very close. close. He, he is, is like my best, my best friend. friend. And he is, he is, he is the, the, the best, best dad in the world. And if I can give anybody advice, advice procreate with a good human, <laughs> because like, just make sure you see like how he treats his mother, how he treats uh, his family, um, because yes, it was really hard and tumultuous during the like actual like separation and initial, but at the end of the day, we decided that um, our daughter is more important than our, you know, like bullshit. So for me, it was like, it was really important to try to get him to like want to be friendly with me again and try to, he came from a really rough divorce family and his parents never got along. So for me, I was like, like, we don't want to do that. that. Like, Like, let's not, let's not not continue continue on these patterns. patterns. Let's be that brave divorced couple that like makes it better for our children than we had it for ourselves. So we had this conversation and he asked me the other day, actually, what would have made you happy? You know, what would, what would you have wanted? And I said, to be free. To be free in a marriage is, or to be free in a relationship is something I've never given anybody, something no one's ever given me before. And I think that finding a balance of trusting your partner to go, go off and do what makes you happy. Because then when you come back, it's going to be like so much more loving and better and you miss that person. But when there's no trust and you can't be you, it's totally it's doomed, totally and it'll, 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 it'll fall it'll apart fall at some point, point, you know, so, so that was my biggest was thing, my biggest like, thing. I, I just, I definitely, like, I have, I am this free bird, I, when I'm 70 years old, I'm probably going to go to some, you know, fabulous dance party in the desert, you know what I mean, I'm just yeah. one of those, you know, yeah. I'll probably yeah. be at, like, yeah. like, you know, yeah. Burning Man, Burning Man, like, I know, Ray, <laughs> and, like, you know, so, I wow, yeah, so yeah. I just, 
Yeah, I need somebody at some point to get that. But right now, what I need is myself to feel good mm -hmm. being by myself, you know? Yes, well said. And so much synergy. I could like just go on some tangent right now, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we'll do it another time. Um, so were you running the company already during COVID divorce time, like, yeah, so that was even crazier. So my company, I had started all on my own, um, but through the divorce, you know, I had to, we had some, some, you know, struggles on separating, separating businesses, businesses, which is always so difficult. So he actually got my family restaurant, which everybody oh. thinks is insane and can't believe it. But yeah, he got the restaurant because I knew that pizza girl was my passion Mm -hmm. Um, and so I removed myself from the restaurant business and I'm actually like, that's where I come from. So it was very like weird and people thought it was crazy, but honestly, he's really good at it and he's doing a great job and I totally support Bobby's pizzeria. Um, he changed, where is the, it? He changed the name, which was actually very like hurtful at first. Um, <laughs> but I'm really proud of him, his logos, his eye for, for, um, just unique, cool vibes is all is really, really good. So I, fully support Bobby's Pizzeria. And now Pizza Girl is my dream. So what happened was I was, I got into about a hundred supermarkets on my own, like very like um, grassroots. I walked into Erwan and I was like, Hey, you got to try my sauce. Luckily it was so small. They were like, well, that's not how you do this, but you know, <laughs> Vicky's upstairs and she'll, you know, if you sit in there in the office, I'm sure she'll talk to you. And I sat there like for hours, like trying to get her to talk to me. She said, yes. So I got into a hundred supermarkets on my own with no funding. And then I like self-funded and then I, and then COVID hits. And every single jar of pasta sauce sold out in two days that I had, which is crazy because it was the big like supermarket boom, you know, that when everybody was cleaning everything out and you'd think that that would be a good problem, but it was actually really bad because I was unable to source my ingredients all of a sudden because being a small company like mine, I guess all the big companies, I won't name names because <laughs> I want them to buy my products. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the big companies bought up all the all the organic farms they like saw this coming before we did you know bought up everything to make sure that they had their ingredients for their products and so the little guy like me was not uh, able to do so so I had to shut down I had to write emails to every single supermarket like falling crying on the floor just like what am I going to do I worked so hard for two years to get to this place of 100 supermarkets and it was going well and I was in the supermarkets doing demos, demos, everybody, everybody loved, loved it. And then I couldn't, and I couldn't source, it, source anymore. it anymore. And I remember crying and Whitney Port from the Hills, the Hills she actually she like helped, helped me out. out. And she, she's, she's really good at really Instagram, Instagram. And she helped me write this big, beautiful message to my, my, my fans basically like, like hey, this is what's happening. happening. I have to I shut have down. down. Please know that like Pizza Girl is coming back. So like, please know that Pizza Girl is coming back. So in that time, after I was done crying and feeling bad for myself, mm -hmm. I, you know, I got the hills and that was really positive. How? And, like just through social network kind of things? You know, um, I was on the season here and there before actually, like mm -hmm. a lot of those kids are my friends. Um, I did a movie with Audrina. I, um, you know, I went to high school with Brody. So I've kind of known a lot of those kids, but also Misha Barton was a good friend of mine mm -hmm. and she was on the season prior to my season. Um, and then turns out she was not a friend of mine. Ooh. Yeah. You got to find, find that out the hard way sometimes. Right. So I found that out kind of like through, um, a really mean social media post that she did. Um, and I, was just like shocked and hurt and all those things that like an empathetic person feels, you know? And then I, um, and then I get a call that I like am replacing her. And I was just thinking like, you know, karma really truly is a bitch. Oh God, this is a bitch. <laughs> Careful because it is, it really is. I, I mean, I, I feel for her, but, and that, that is a hard pill to swallow, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But I do know I that do just know be that good, be kind, kind, don't go behind people's behind backs, people's backs and, and good things, things will happen to you. Happen and what had happened was the producer saw, saw me on camera with her. Like I went to a couple of events with her and then I guess they had my microphone and um, they went back and listened to me and they were like, hey, like why aren't we paying attention to her is what, you know, one of the producers, Megan, said. And 
they were like, they're cool, like, cool. Like, like, she's the girl. They must have auditioned, like, like, thousands of people. people. And they chose me, crazy-haired, pink-haired me. So it was cool. And so is that, I don't know anything about these series. Is it, like, shooting now, or are you... So we finished shooting it. It took forever because of COVID. It was like, stop, go, stop. Mm. It was really hard for like the group of us to kind of get into a groove at times because all of a sudden, you know, someone has COVID and everything shut down for, you know, the foreseeable future. So um, it was hard, but now we're done. It already aired. Um, I think it's still out there to be a VC. It just finished airing a couple months ago, uh, maybe two months ago. And then, um, yeah, now we're waiting to hear if it's going to get picked up again, because even though it did really well, there's a lot of people that don't want to work with some of the people on the show. Oh, okay. And I was told that of all the, of all the TV shows out there. Um, and this is by, this is from somebody who works with like the housewives and all these like really people that you'd imagine would be difficult to work with said that the Hills cast is the worst and most difficult cast to deal with. Really? Yeah. So they might not pick it back up because people know why. I, I don't know if I would, if I was, you know, yeah. Like, I don't want to deal with that crap. But, totally. And yeah. it's, is it a long running show? It's kind of been all, around for a while, right? You know, forever. And then it went on pause for like, it, or just ended for like seven years and then this is the reboot you know this is the hills new beginnings so oh, okay yeah, so they had two seasons so far and who knows if there will be a three we still haven't heard a darn thing okay well new beginnings sound very appropriate very very appropriate did you so you grew up in LA Hollywood like I did I started in the valley um, and then in seventh grade, I moved to Malibu mm. and, um, that's because my dad opened a pizza shop there. So people also misconstrue that as like, oh, she's like this rich girl and living in Malibu. And the truth is, is I was, you know, I was like, and everybody always asks like, how did you become friends with all these people? And I was like, well, I went to Malibu high, but I was like, also like delivering pizzas to all the parties for my friends. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it was a very weird combination of like living in this like super privileged situate like surroundings but not fully I mean listen I I I, I'm very grateful for everything I had and I do feel very privileged um to have lived the life that I have um but yeah it was definitely more of like a you know an interesting dynamic I think so um I hear what you're talking about I grew up in Kansas of all places um I know nothing about Kansas yeah (laughs) yeah yeah I don't I don't know what you need to know about Kansas except except that I'm from there um but we moved there when I was like seven and we moved to this like very kind of homogenous very white bread like kind of upper middle class up to upper upper uh new corporate like booming place you know yeah. And I remember yeah. when I felt like everybody had like this abundance. This is how it felt as a kid, you know? And it's just, you learn so much as you grow up, but like, it felt like everybody had like wealth around me. Yeah. And yeah. that we were sort of in this situation of like, almost like acting like we did. Mm. It was really interesting. Yeah. Cause even when my dad left his corporate job, and started driving a taxi like we got help from grandparents and family members and stuff to like stay where we were yeah. you know which I'm grateful for because I wanted of course I want to stay with my friends of course I wasn't looking for a move at that stage of life like in high school and stuff um yeah I couldn't wait to get out when I was done with high school I moved right here to LA at 17 um but I don't know, I'm just relating to what you're saying, this kind of juxtaposition. And it's not like anything's wrong with like anyone. It's just more like this kind of dual reality you're sort of like experiencing. Absolutely. I mean, I remember like, you know, Paris Hilton's like one of my best friends. And since, you know, she threw my 18th birthday and we had the pizza truck there and she was oh, cool. so supportive. And um, I just remember like trying to keep up 
at a time at a point you know like trying to keep up and um you know I was her DJ so I did do her whole like stars blind like DJ like I I was the DJ for her whole like record release tour so we got to travel like the world together and I didn't have enough outfits like I couldn't keep up with her clothing wise because like I couldn't afford like a dress for every single night and you never wear anything twice and it's like this crazy you know in the 2000s it was like all about that crazy bullshit so I was just like really struggling and I remember I'd go to downtown LA and I'd just get like these bolts of fabric and before going out I would just like wrap fabric around my body in some cool way and then like sew it and it just looked so random and cool and I remember one time Nikki Hilton came up to me and she was like I love your dress where'd you get it and I was like yes uh, <laughs> so it was just a really like crazy time and actually there's this really funny story where like Paris started just like lending me outfits to go places so I'd be like babe like I can't I don't have anything to wear and she's like here just wear whatever you want in my closet so I'd wear something and then I'd end up in who wore it best um, between, um, between me and, me her, and her in us weekly, weekly and, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing her, her, her clothes. <laughs> yeah, like, her clothes. <laughs> yeah, it was just so funny. But this is like the shit, right? It's just like, this is life. Like we're all just kind of humans. Like yeah. no matter what things you have or don't have, it's like, it is about those connections and those adventures, right? It's like, absolutely, yeah. It's so funny. I actually worked a little bit um, before I started directing with David LaChapelle. Did you ever meet him? I have met him. I have met him. I didn't, I don't know him very well, but he, yeah, he did a lot of stuff with Paris and yeah. yeah. I didn't know him at the exact same moment, but I, I remember that they collaborated. Yeah. I remember this. I can see it one, uh, one of the pictures in my head. She's like, I think she was like flipping off the camera and like something really. Yeah. Really yeah. beautiful. Really striking stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I wanted to ask you, like, how do you manifest? I love that you're reading the untethered soul and I'm sure you've tapped into some other really cool, like alchemy <laughs> practices. Yeah, um, yeah, you know. How do I manifest? Sorry. And vision, we can talk about pizza girl. I mean, like that was a vision come manifest. Like when did you have the vision for that? So what's crazy is I, 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 I had the vision when I was pregnant and I, so I was, like I said, I was a DJ and I was also like a, a party girl and I, I got caught up in a, a lot of like drugs and partying and like a bunch of my friends died and you know, it was just like a really like, I was definitely like an addict at times in my life. I don't think I'm a forever addict, you know, um, I, I've always struggled with that, but I, I definitely, um, once I got pregnant, it definitely like stopped me in my tracks, saved my life, I'm sure. Um, that's actually what, like, this is here on my hand. It says stay. And Aww. actually my daughter wrote that, wrote it. And then I tattooed that's over beautiful. it. Um, and that's basically just a reminder of me to like stay oh, alive, you know, like for her. And I actually, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And it's, no, it doesn't. It's, it's, I've always had this weird, like thought, I think because of my mother's death that I was going to die young. I never saw myself, you know, you see yourself like, as your parents, as they are older, you know what I mean? So when she, I'm already older than she was when she died now. So for me, it was always like, live fast, you know, like whatever happens, happens, love your life, live your life now. It's, it, you know, cause it's not long. I always thought of life as like being very short and not long. So I was just like, kind of like, kind of my, like therapist my therapist called it, called it F, F, F it mentality. mentality. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, F it in there. Had, and then I struggle with because there's just a moment when I'm just like, F it, you know, just like have fun. But I, um, I've definitely had to, um, so anyway, I got pregnant and I obviously stopped everything that was toxic and I really needed something. My DJ agent would call me and be like, you know, I DJed up to like six months pregnant, like six wow. months. Yeah, I wore like big baggy, like flowy things and got away with it for a while and then um, this artist like posted about it. And then I, I actually got dropped from my label. Like the second they found out that I was pregnant, which is crazy. Whoa. Yeah. I was with universal. So, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm that that's, say why, that's but why, but I know that that's why. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I also but didn't I tell also a million records, so they could definitely throw that uh, out there. But I, um, I felt a really big, like sadness wrapped around being pregnant, which 
I think is where a lot of the postpartum and stuff comes from because what happens, what happens is, happens like, is like, like you, you stop, stop your life when you are pregnant in a way, like even if you try, and that's why so many people have this like stigma of like women, like being able to keep up when they're pregnant or, you know what I mean? Like, so I, my whole life changed the moment I got pregnant and I was, it was hard for me. I wasn't one of those mom pregnant women that was like, oh, I love this. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, like get this out of my body so that I can have my life back. And, but the moment I met my daughter, that's when everything changed. And that's when I started to heal. And so many, like when you lose, when you lose a parent or when you struggle with a parent or have like issues with a parent, having a child can really heal those things because you see these moments of you as a child through your child. And then like all of a sudden you're the parent and like you do something better. You do something for your child that you would have wanted the parent to do for you. And it's like this crazy, like, I just have to still thinking, thinking about it. It's like this crazy healing, magical moment that like, it's just pretty magical. So for me, it like totally saved my life, stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, I, I, I don't want to DJ anymore. I can't do this. I can't. I did it a little bit after she was born. I flew to the Philippines and she did a baby. And it was just really hard, like so hard. So I I told my agent, I was like, I just can't do this anymore. Um, it's not good for my mental health. And I needed to find something that was. And I found that there was a major gap in the market when it came to pasta sauce you know it was all like very like old world male driven and I was thinking it was like who's who's actually in need of a jar of pasta sauce you know like it's a young you know hard working you know millennial type mom who's just very busy and wants something really healthy it's not you know grandma because grandma would be making sauce you know from the night before till the next day and so I wanted to do something that was earth Earth conscious, conscious, health health conscious, conscious, like like, I wanted to do something that was, that was really good. And that hasn't been done before in the space. Like it's definitely disrupting the space. People are like, what are you thinking? Like you're doing pink labels, pink, pink, you know, pink and and green and like these weird like labels. labels. And I just made this, my friend took a picture of me in my kitchen. And I love that. That's like so artsy and cool. Thank you. And you know what? Everyone thought it was crazy. You know, like everyone was like, you know, it's such a loaded space. space. I'm not going to be able to like make make any headway. And I, I I am. So um, Um, what's cool is that not a single single supermarket supermarket has said no yet. yet. And And it just just takes time. And now we're in over 200 supermarkets, including Gelson's, Whole Foods, Bristol Farms, Erwan, well, no, sorry, Erwan's coming up. Um, But all, all 65 Whole Foods in Southern California, we're in Jade's, we're in, you know, all these markets, we're just kind of just growing at a pace that allows us to not need massive funding so it takes time Mm -hmm. um but we're getting there and it's really exciting and i couldn't be happier to just do this now and be this ceo and develop new products that i believe people really need and love so cool and so you were able after doing the hills to resurrect a bit the the brand so what I did was I shut down the company. It was about six months. I actually, my friend Cami, who's the CEO of Parade, and she's just like a like genius, genius Parade underwear. underwear. She actually she sat actually down sat here down at the Villa Carlotta, um, and she was um, like, I'm going to help like, you on, you, you know, this really you know, detailed, detailed pitch deck, pitch deck and go out to investors because, investors. you know, I believe in your product and you're, you know, got this going on. So I did that. I spent months working on this investor deck and getting, wow. getting it all together. And then I finally met the right investors and we are just such a solid team they're a husband and wife from australia yeah. rebecca and aaron, rebecca and aaron they are the they're best. the best um, um and, and we just work we really just well, work together. well together and um we they definitely, we like, definitely keep like keep me accountable, accountable. and vice versa. vice versa they're just like <laughs> Couldn't, I couldn't have asked for better partners. So now, yes, the Hills helped um, spread the word. I was really grateful that they actually wanted to tell my story about, they're like, well, you know what? Your story is your product. It's not like a lot of people go on a reality show and they just like come up with a product because they're on a TV show. For me, like it is my life. So you can't really do a reality show with me without talking about pizza girl, you know? Yeah. Talk about some like interesting pieces coming together. How are you feeling now about, about life? <laughs> How am I feeling now? I'm feeling very like optimistic. I'm feeling like 
Um, I'm finally digging out of this like heavy heaviness that I've had for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I see like the future now, like I really dug myself into a lot of holes, like just being like a wild party girl, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm still getting myself out of a few of them. Um, you know, some really bad investment thoughts, really bad, like just, you know, didn't always do things. I'm just cleaning up some of my like younger mess still, mm -hmm. but I'm very close. I'm very close yes. and you can do it. You just have to like <laughs> concentrate, sit down and do it. And I feel really good. I feel really good. If this is the first time where like after my divorce, I finally feel like I'm, um, I'm on the right, I'm on the right what an empowering journey, man. Seriously. Um, and somebody on Instagram is actually asking, what is pizza girl? So if you could just give like a kind of absolutely of I mean, just a really funny, funny video story. because pizza girl is pasta sauce and it's like, what? Like it's not pizza sauce, it's pasta sauce, but it's called pizza <laughs> girl. And everybody's like, um, that's confusing. And I was like, I know, but it's just because pizza girl is pizza girl because I was called pizza girl my whole life and I hated it, but that then became my persona. Um, I would walk down the street and people were like, pizza girl, what's up? But pizza girl right now is an all organic Italian foods brand, starting with these delicious these pasta delicious sauces, sauces um, that were inspired, that were inspired by, by my grandmother, grandmother and great grandmother, and great -grandmother, and great -grandmother who are fantastic, fantastic Italian, Italian cooks. cooks. And, and um, uh, I just, I did all these crazy taste tests and I just got it together and they're all organic. There's no added sugar. It is the healthiest sauce on the shelves without compromising on taste. So a lot of healthy sauces, they just taste like crap. And then a lot of other sauces just have so much like high fat content and oils and so much sodium and added sugars and preservatives. So I wanted to do something that was the antithesis to all of that. And <laughs> truly like we're the best. I promise you when you try pizza girl, you fall in love. You really do. And you change and you make the switch over to pizza girl. Yeah. And people can get it right now on pizzagirl.com when, if we're not in a supermarket near you, because right now we're only in California but we're growing so keep asking supermarkets for pizza girl get pissed off when they don't have it <laughs> totally i like borderline was at erawan i was like wait a second here <laughs> yeah you gotta ask them be like where you guys don't have pizza girl like what's wrong with you <laughs> um actually you just the way you were going i just had a vision have you had a um let's what do we want to call it a piece of like branded content like a short or i don't want to say commercial but like I mean, we've done some stuff, yeah, but you know, know we're, we're on a really tight budget, tight budget right, right now. now. So, so we're, we're not, not spending, spending so much money on that. It's all been very like organic. Um, luckily, I do have a lot of like really cool mommy influencers that have helped and have loved it. Um, you know, I'm finding a lot of like sororities are like ordering mm -hmm. for their whole sorority because it's like people care, even young people care about what they're putting in their bodies now. Mm -hmm. and people go oh so a sauce is 9.99 but when you think about it it's healthy organic delicious and then it feeds like you know four people for that amount it's actually not that much, you know when you yeah. think about like, what you're gonna make and whatever it's actually not that much and we're trying to show people that like you can use people automatically assume like pasta sauce pasta right no with us like with my grandmother called it the gravy and you use it for everything i mean i'm cooking salmon dishes all wrapped up in the arbiata you know chicken dishes even eggs even yeah. eggs anything it's endless yes. I, made, I made a bloody mary the other day with the pizza girl sauce so you can do it all cocktail sauces and and yeah everything so that's so cool no the vision i was getting actually is like because of the artwork and and the vibe around it i was like actually seeing a little like avant-garde like almost short pizza girl film <laughs> like yeah. i could see the art like coming to life actually you need to direct it I would love to. I would love to actually. That's right up my alley. Cool. Hey, <laughs> right. I, I'm always looking for people that want to collab and be creative. And yeah. Like yeah. I really do. And I'm wrapping up my film. So it's like, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. Well, I feed people. I, know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so, okay. Considering um, your background, the name of the show, did you want to be famous? Like, did you, growing up in LA, like I said, I grew up in Kansas, but was that like a thing, you know? Yeah, when I was younger, absolutely, I wanted to be famous. Like my all my friends were famous. And um, it was weird because I, I thought that was just like what I was supposed to do. You know what I mean? And I, 
I, you know, I did the acting thing for a while and I did love it, but I also, I also wasn't that, I, yeah, like, I don't know. And then I would go DJ. I was kind of like a little all over the place, you know? So I wasn't like dead set on one thing or the other. I think for me, um, I don't mind the camera, you know, I don't mm -hmm. mind just being myself. So for me, it doesn't add any extra like weird anxiety. I think I went through a little phase back in the day of like, the judgment stuff, but now I'm so good at it. I'm like, you want to throw hate at me, throw hate at me. Like, I don't care. I remember the first time I ever had like a really mean article written about me. I was very young and it was a picture of me on the beach and it was actually very violating. They zoomed in on my vagina Ooh. and called me the camel toe of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I just remember falling, crying and I called Nicole Ritchie actually. And I was like, ah. she's like, Oh, stop it. She's like, do you see the stuff they say about me? She's like, it's all good. As long as they're talking, it's fine, whatever. Just get over <laughs> it, you know? And I was like, okay. So I kind of just like saw through my friends, like all going through really like really shitty times of people talking crap, but mm -hmm. it kind of just comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, like if people really want to get to know me and they really like you know, like I talk to everybody on social media, like I answer all my fans, like I'm, I'm very like real and kind of like, like you can talk with me. So I feel like the people that get me, they get me and that's cool. And the people that don't, I don't need them anyway. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of my mentality about it now. It sounds really healthy. What would you say to, I mean, this, it sounds corny to start a sentence that way. What would you say? But for real, because it's such a thing um, that is actually almost like mentally, emotionally destabilizing for young people to have the obsession with becoming famous. I mean, you've you've discovered a passion, yeah, yeah. which is I can see clearly with the way you talk about it, your driving force. Yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah. No, you, it's all about people, people. Literally. And you know what? I watched a lot of um, I watch a lot of different shows that are like based on, I did um, the, a master class and I watched, um, I forgot her name, but she's the creator of Spanx. And I watched her master class. Oh yeah, Sarah, Sarah something. Yeah. Yeah, she's incredible, so smart. She was like, listen, she's like, you gotta go out, you gotta buy your own products. You gotta like get people to buy it. You gotta like force people to buy it for a while. And then it you know, goes on. So I got some advice about that. And then she's also like, but if you can get on a TV show, she's like, do it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I like went out like, like what TV what show can I get on to? But when I got, when the, got the offer, offer I, was like, I was like, yes, yes because, because I'm gonna, gonna, you know, get to share my story and get people to try it, and you know. So it worked out. It's all for the main goal, though. It's not just to be, you know, famous. Because I'm actually really bad at being famous. If I'm I'm bad like, at it, I already would have been super famous. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I, was, like, I wasn't good at like keeping up with the Kardashians because I was just. You have to really want that every single day you have to get mm -hmm. up and put on glam and get your outfit yeah. and i am just i enjoy it when it comes naturally but i don't i don't have that deep drive that like kim kardashian will tell you she has you know what i mean and mm -hmm. i respect that absolutely totally. yeah, yeah i'm just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think, yeah, there's something, and it's also like this, the stage of life you're in, the, the point in your journey uh, that you're in to yeah. catch this wave and to be on the show after yeah. you've gone through so much life experience, yeah. you're kind of at a ground, it feels like you're in a grounded space. Um, what about this like culture of obsessing over like how your body compares to other people's bodies or I mean I know young girls whether I've mentored them or they've my little cousins or whoever um and emerging artists yeah that are instead of focusing on their craft are literally that are actually super talented literally using their energy to obsess about who they need to compete with or how they can get more likes or all this different kind of stuff it makes me sad I think the striving for likes is really sad it's a sad it makes me sad because it's like people are willing to do anything for it and mm -hmm. I, I, I have a really big, big problem, problem with listen I'm, I'm like anybody, anybody else, else I'm willing I'm to use a filter here, filter here and there like if I just really look like crap and have to get something out or I'll, I'll throw on sunglasses you know what I mean you gotta like not 
whatever, but I, but I don't, I really think it's taking it too far when you see um, these images of people and they're like cinching in their waist and cinching in their arms. And, yeah. and I think that that's when it gets dangerous, you know, because then you're just living this like almost like catfish lifestyle where you're not who you say you are. And then you also show people that you're ashamed of who you are. And I just think that we're teaching kids that and it's not good. Like I have friends who will, who will totally like fix every photo, you know what I mean? Like hardcore fix every photo. And I'll say like, Hey, like, can you not fix my face? So they may look like super porcelain and I'm a little <laughs> ratty and whatever. I mean, listen, some of my stuff is definitely like retouched, like the professional stuff for sure. Like the pizza girl, professional stuff, magazine stuff, the edit, you know, the photographer always like cleans it up for sure. But I think when you're just talking to the camera or stuff mm -hmm. and they're using these apps where it's like fake eyelashes are moving to the side <laughs> and things like that, it's just, I don't know. It's just not sexy. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not. It's not. It's, it's a misconception. I think it's a I misconception. It. It. Yeah. Like when I go to, even when I go to get my facial, they, they get some, put some stuff on me sometimes and I'm looking, I'm like, what is that filter? I'm embarrassed. They can't repost that. You know, I don't. I don't like the really crazy face changing filters. At yeah. All. yeah. 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 And I feel like I'm going to make sure that my daughter is not like confused by all of that. You know, I think it's really important as parents that we teach our kids that like to be more comfortable with who you are. You know what I mean? Like, listen, I'll, I go and get like, you know, facials and things all the time. And I can't say that I'll never get, you know, a little, a little touch up here and there, but, but not to the extent where you look like a different person mm -hmm. or I don't know, because it's just, it's a fine line. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's yeah. to like feel refreshed and good about yourself. It's important to feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you don't look that way and then you post it, I don't know. It's yeah. It's also like, I have to charge my computer. Um, it's also like we, we struggle in our culture with unworthiness. That seems to be a theme. Yeah. And I really do believe, and maybe I'm like too into like quantum physics or something, but like whatever your superpower is, like nobody else has it. Yeah. Like we can all have varying degrees of certain things, but like you can only do you the way you do you. And like, I just really like wish people could be excited about, you know, who they are as they are. I mean, that's a lot to ask. You need the ups and downs and the journey and like you need to go through stuff. But this sort of fixation on what's external rather than like really looking at the why of uh, kind of why do I feel so down on myself, you know, like for real, rather than like distracting with all these images that just make it worse. Um, I just feel like, I don't know. I want to intervene. <laughs> I want to like. There's where like social media can make me feel like like crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I notice that, and I go, "Oh, like a teenager would really get affected by this if I'm getting affected by this." You know what I mean? Like, I see myself like just kind of doing the scrolly thing and just like seeing all these people living their fabulous lives, and like if I'm having a bad day or a bad week, or you know, it can really just like because everybody has to remember we're only posting our most fabulous moments mm -hmm. we're only up when we're at the concert when we're at, not when we're like you know at home like you know eating in bed you know what i mean yeah. like, but all of us are real and all of us have all those moments but people are only posting their most fabulous moments so it's like I, it's just, it's really important for everybody to remember that it's not that everybody's lives are better than yours. It's not that, you know, it's just that it's fake. It's fake. It's not real. And, um, I, you know, like, I think the times that I've been more real on Instagram, no, on the, times, Instagram, that the times that I have more 
more like of a connection with people. It's interesting. When I just, when I, just, when I just, when I just, when I see it right there in the numbers, when I just post like myself looking myself awesome, awesome and like some and, like, fabulous, fabulous stupid, stupid quote, quote, it gets like, like some love. love. But then when I post this like real authentic moment, um, it's just, it's much more relatable. So I think like, even for me being on the hills, I was like, how do I fit in to something like this? You know what I mean? Like, it's so, I had, I had a hard time with it at, at times because I was like, I don't fit in. I don't like, you know, that everybody's just kind of like privileged and doing, you know, like, I just didn't want to like portray that and not show that I'm like an actual, like hardworking, like thoughtful human, you know? So there was like, I really wanted to make sure that that came across and um, yeah, I just feel like we lose ourselves to this, like, it gives you like a high when you get a bunch of like likes and a thing and it's, it's just fake, you know what I mean? So just remember that, like, it's all fake and um, yeah, it's, it's not real. It's not real life. And I do. It's really not. My phone. I do. And I'm one of those people, like the other night I went out with my girlfriends and we made this joke because they were both just on their phone the whole time. And I was like, I haven't looked at my phone once, you bitches. You know what? Like, let's just have fun and like, let's have a real conversation. And I love that, like, you know, my, my, um, my friend and I, we put my friend Ryan and I, we put down our phones. We put, we left our phones in, in our hotel in New York and we just went on an excursion and figured out how to get places and do things for I like that. eight hours. And it was like so liberating, you know? It's the best. Try to do it. You got to take phone breaks, man. Digital detoxes are key to mental health. Huge. Um, huge. huge. And I love that you, you know, your best friends have had a lot of like public attention, let's just say. And you were talking about them as real people, which I think is really important. Um, a lot of the things that are portrayed are not the person, probably everything, really, truly. That's not the human in essence, you know? And I think that's important for people to know is that everyone's on a journey and whether you're on a public platform or you're not on a public platform, it's like you still have your worth, you know? And Absolutely. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think like listening listening is also like uh like a forgotten art you know yes yes everybody's just ready to talk about themselves have you ever just gone to a dinner and been like what what did we learn here like <laughs> talking over each other they right? just spit out their thought and yeah. like so I'm really trying to focus on listening more Active yeah. listening, active listening, active listening. So many, totally. Um, so many gems in this. Okay, one final question, just to, and then Chelio can deliver his his message. Um, so humanizing the icon. What does that conjure for you? Just that phrase, like just off the cuff. I mean, that's basically. I just got the chills thinking because it's like basically everything that we have been talking about. You know what I mean? It's just being comfortable being you and that is what I have worked on that has been my lifelong um mission is just to be so comfortable in who I really am mm -hmm. and if I want to take off my shoes and run around barefoot and not brush my hair um and you know not wear makeup and all this stuff, then I'm actually sexier, sexier that way because, that way because I, when, you when you feel you, you you're, the you're the hottest you can ever be. Can ever be. It's yeah. really the thing. Like when you don't feel you, it's very obvious. And it's just like instantly like unattractive. It's the weirdest thing. Like, have you ever just been attracted to somebody and not known why? It's yeah. that like, it's that like inner confidence that like just truthfully being yourself. And I think that if people can just start really getting more accepting and more comfortable in their own skin, which I, I see happening, which is really beautiful. Um, then yeah, it's going to, everybody's going to be so much sexier. <laughs> I know. And it brings us to like how we even use showers and fragrances to cover okay. ourselves up. Like I love, I love that you're talking about not brushing your hair, like, you know, just uh, not hiding, 
you know yeah, we have yeah. so many things to like not look or smell or whatever the way way we naturally are and maybe I'm just a hippie but I kind of like are. yeah you you I do I know right you <laughs> I do I shave my armpits that's one thing I really do sometimes I let my leg hair grow out a little too long but <laughs> I, I hardly ever shave but see I don't I don't actually have a lot of hair I like people can't even tell if I haven't shaved for like months it's kind of funny but that's amazing you're very yeah. lucky. um very lucky yeah, I don't have that um, <laughs> yeah I mean I just think that like I don't know you just gotta do what works for you and it might be the complete opposite but what you're saying is just like be you and that's beautiful whether it's fully loaded or completely raw because you know what the people that are actually going to love the you-ness are the people that you actually want in your life you know what I mean like yes. the more you you are and the people who stick around those are the people those are your tribe yes yes that love the unfiltered you Thank you. <laughs> um, and Chelio made the unfiltered us. Um, Chelio, do you want to tell us what uh, your message is? Hi. It's really, so, really cool. Oh my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> it looks like so, a third eye is like wide open. Yes, this is the work happened today with Caroline. So, um, it's very interesting intrigate uh, uh, things. So we have a composition. We have in the uh, this side, we have some person. Oh, wow, yeah. Is part of the beginning of uh, um, this part of this girl, right? So we have one man but become a strange, uh, a strange uh, face with the closed eye and like last breed and something negative inside of this person. So it's like, uh, it's like a, a bad moment. It's like, uh, and not, not, a very nice moment in uh, you passing you have in your life, but mm -hmm. is in the beginning. So uh, oh. all is you 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 perceive this you you see this yes okay so is one in the other so is person and the negative part something bad energy is coming so, okay. But uh, ahead we saw a fish eat fish. It, uh, fish eat fish is the, uh, the process of evolution. So from the, this moment is become the evolution of a fish, but this start to be eat, eat fish, fish eat fish, eat, eat, eat fish. Uh -huh. Mm. And go the direction is a purge. So, in the final of this evolution, have a purge. So, to escape, like the tube of escape. So, a negative things is gone because it's, it's not anymore part of your evolution. And under we have a circle of light. So in your mind, uh, have space, and you uh, you you put energy around this space. It's empty. It's, you have to put the uh, rest of your life inside. It's a space for your progress, for your evolution. In this. In this part of mind, we have a, a sort of um, a ball cage. Ball cage is a imaginary imaginary problem. So, uh, in your mind, probably you uh, still around your mind something in the cage don't want to come out. 
but we have some uh, person inside and maybe looking for you. Maybe it's a black person oh. and, and look for you and is um, like a consultant or some person give you advice or but is part of this uh, um, come si può dire? Um, italiano this uh, hurricane is a hurricane in your mind and is a um, a ball cage but is imaginary problem is not true is only in your mind in this other side, we saw uh, our, our roots. You have a roots, so you are stable. You are uh, determined in your uh, in your evolution, in your life. So our roots is not big, but is deep. So, and something. This is uh, something egg. Something new coming in your life, maybe another baby, wow. maybe another situation. So, uh, wow, you are ready. So, fast, uh, you have a, a very hard beginning with some person. Is this is in the end of something last week, and negative things with energy, but progress it. Fish eat fish, and so is evolution. A purge you put outside all negative things oh, yeah. is your purge, and there's yeah. uh, a, a, a circle cage is imaginary problem. Somebody look for this and say, Oh, no problem, don't think it. You have good roots deep, and something new happen to you. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, Chelio, that's amazing. Thank I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to say goodbye on Instagram real quick because um, it's getting a little feedbacky. But yeah, so we'll stay on this and wrap up, but we'll say goodbye on Instagram. Okay. Thanks, Thank Instagram you. people. <laughs> people. Bye. Um, okay, Chelio. Yeah. That's amazing. When you said there's like a black person to maybe give her guidance, I saw like a shaman actually. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and yes. I love this like light coming from her third eye and the idea of all the negative like leaving and just the fish swimming and it's really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, well, so we'll say goodbye on Facebook. And uh, Caroline, thank you so much. This was like seriously the start of hopefully more just talking. I can't, there's so many things you said that I've literally been exploring in my life. It's being free in a relationship. And that's a big one. Huge. I didn't even realize it. Like we just suffocate, you know, <laughs> each other. Mm -hmm. It's like, you just gotta like know that if you let them go, they will come back to you if they're the one, you know? Yeah. And you don't have to compromise yourself. Like you can compromise in the mundane and be flexible and things like that. That's not the same thing, but like, you don't have to compromise yourself, you know? Right. Yeah. Like be supportive without being, without losing yourself. Yes. Yeah. And this applies to like pop culture fame and it applies to interpersonal relationships. It's just totally. like really, really cool. Um, yeah. So this is amazing. I'm going to stop the live stream and then we'll, we'll officially say goodbye on Zoom. But um, thank you, Facebook friends. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.